I don't like. Hello, everyone. I'm John Higgins, contributing writer to Film and TV Now, and it's a delight to welcome one and all to this interview special with Jan Jansen and Mark Davis, the directors of um, a brand new documentary called Traces of Glory, which focuses on the life and times of the life and times of the rock band Idaho. And we're also joined with much pleasure by Jeff Martin, who's one of the founders of the band. So, um, and this is reflects um, Martin's journey through the highs and lows of the band, uh, which was on the fringe rather than the frontier of classic rock success around the time of grunge. And also in couples with his relationship with bandmate and guitar player, John Berry. A warm welcome to one and all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, I've got to start, I mean, Mark and uh, Jana, I mean, when were you first aware of Idaho as a band? Uh, I was made aware of Idaho as a band through a, a guitar player that, that played in my band, uh, probably around 95 or 96. And he was a huge Idaho fan. And he turned me on to them. And I started listening to a few songs that I liked. And I got further and further you know, into that was probably Three Sheets to the Wind was the first album that I listened to. And a couple songs just grabbed me right, right off the top. And then as I got further and further into the sort of inner workings of the Idaho uh, uh, hive brain, I got in further and further into some of the different albums and things. And, uh, you know, it just sort of sucked me in. So that was sort of the beginning of my love affair with Idaho. Mm hmm. Um, Jeff, um, warm welcome to you. I mean, I've got to just start asking you from the perspective of, I mean, where, I mean, the, the documentary touches on a lot of the stuff that you went through, the general arc. I mean, obviously, are there experiences and things that you had in your, that you've had in your time of Idaho um, that have kind of not made it into the cut that you can sort of share with us that have been, you know, really positive moments um, from your experiences so far? Yeah. Um... I mean, the, the, the doc concentrates on the, the sort of first years of, of Idaho, which are arguably sort of the, the, the most interesting part of it. It's the inception and it's, it's when John was really involved. But there are other chapters that, that I feel, you know, were probably... Uh, not touched on as much there's the whole second phase of me recording here in laurel canyon more and and uh i i, I went when i when i watched the doc i mean mark kind of relied heavily on the, the first stuff which doesn't sound as gorgeous and beautiful as as, as the the music i did later so the the perfectionist in me is sitting in the theater going like ah this stuff is kind of harsh and I, I i wish there was more of this sort of more recent music in there but it it, it doesn't matter at all that's just my problem really um but you know there were just so many chapters because i would sort of sway in and out of 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 the uh of of uh of uh making idaho stuff and and it it, it covers you know there's like three decades now so there's d definitely a, a a a lot of different avenues mark could have taken but i'm glad that he concentrated on my relationship with john because i think that's the, really the sort of uh um um you you unique and, and and beautiful part of the story really i mean there's some people that that have seen the doc that were like well i mean there's just so much more to to, to that mark could, could have touched on but i i kind of think that, that 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 definitely was the way to go which is kind of ironic i mean john was in the band for one year but but his 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 presence is there throughout my 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 career definitely and he was a big influence and a big cheerleader for me i don't think any of it would have happened without him and uh yeah so yeah um one of the things that came out of it at the very outset we have people sort of are being asked how do you describe idaho's music per se i mean as the creator of this stuff i mean how do you describe it i mean at first, I remember people thinking it was kind of dark. And I said, well, it really is just sort of a modern day blues in a way. And there's something very, there's, a, there's, there's an irony there where this music that appears to be kind of sad and, and, and stark and, and I, I found it to be so joyous in a way. I mean, it, 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 
it encapsulated all aspects of life and emotion in a way that 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 I really craved. And maybe it was a way that I was kind of airing my personal issues and it was a way to sort of vent and and everything. But but you know, it's it's just to me kind of moody pop rock in a way and very textural and almost film music in 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 many senses it's it's got a visual aspect to it so it, it's it's a tough thing to describe definitely i mean and people struggle to to find bands that you can c compare it to i mean the, the 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 sort of bands that we started with were I guess the closest would be Radiohead perhaps and but then you've got that Dinosaur Junior side you've got that more sort of indie college rock stuff I mean I had very strange uh, uh, scope of of influences you know there's the sort of I I I come from jazz really I mean I loved Weather Report and and Duke Ellington. And but then I was exposed to stuff like all those SST bands, like the uh, the uh, the uh, Meat Puppets and everything. So it's I hear all that stuff in there. Um, but yeah, it's I I don't I I think someone else could probably describe the music better than I yeah. can. But of course, yeah. you're going to ask me. I mean, me. the thing that struck me about it was that it takes me back to my early '90s days when I shared a bed, a flat share in London, and it was actually the time where we had cable TV. And this was when MTV was doing Unplugged and stuff like that. So it was kind of the time when Nirvana played Unplugged and you had Soul Asylum and the replacements and stuff. I mean, Soul Asylum probably got more exposure simply because of lead singer David Pernan's relationship with Winona Ryder at the time. And that was the thing. But it but it does. I mean, I, it sort of brings me back to like going to indie clubs in the late 90s. And that's the thing about it. I like the. I like the I like the actual texture of the music. It's a real kind of going out on a Friday night to there's a club called Underworld in London, which is near the Camden World's End. So that's what it reminds me of. Um, Mark yeah. and Jan, um, I just got to talk a little bit about, you know, when when did you how, what are the key things about actually putting together a documentary about a band like uh, Idaho? What what was your start off point? Well, the, the starting point really was we loved the band. And, and I knew it was going to be a little bit of a challenge from the standpoint of, you know, the, the band has a really strong cult following and I wanted to really expand that. So as a fan, and, and, and Jeff, Jeff often talks about the music and the decisions and, and what, what he probably understands, but he, he, may, not, he may not understand or, or realize was that I'm a fan, so I made the film the way I wanted it to be. And, and so it was like very much like an homage through the, through the lens of my eyes of what, of what I thought was gonna work in a, in a very limited way because you only have a certain amount of time. Um, but I love that aspect of it. And, and we were, you know, we were fans making a film for fans. And, you know, and, and that's always been the really cool aspect of, uh, for me. So that was sort of a starting point. Like, how do we introduce people to the music? And I wanted the music to be its own character in the film, which is why you have these sort of extended montages of music. I didn't want it to be like a sound bed under people talking. So I wanted the music to really act as its own character in the film. And, and along with Jeff's footage, you know, it's sort of this window into Jeff's mind a little bit. And I think people really fall into that. And I think that's why it's a little bit mesmerizing because it's almost like you're, you're, you're sort of stepping into this like three dimensional world of, of Jeff Martin in Idaho. And that's what I really loved about it. So I wanted to introduce people to the music and, and give them a little bit more than like three or four seconds of a song to really start to get into it. I want people coming out of this film saying like, I want to buy all the albums. I want to go see this band. I want to get to know Jeff Martin and his music better. Just like to follow a little bit the same journey that I had. So I started with some songs that maybe would be a little bit more familiar to people to kind of draw them through. And then we start to get into more esoteric things and you know, a smattering of, of different types of songs. But I mean, Jeff's right. I mean, there's, there's loads of beautiful songs that didn't make it into this film. You know, and and that's that's show business, as they say. But yeah, you know, it, I mean, it can't be the great thing is, is I think this is the third music documentary I've seen in recent years that I think really celebrates it. And even if you don't know who the band is, you can really enjoy the essence of what it is. The other two are Edgar Wright's The Sparks Brothers 
and Spike Jonze's brilliant um, Beastie Boys movie, which I absolutely, you know, I mean, we only think of We Gotta Fight, but it was so humorous. It was so, and I think that's the great thing. The personality of the band really comes through in this footage. I mean, again, it's, you know, and again, it's it's a kind of rediscovery because I think the first ever rock documentary I ever saw was The Last Waltz with the band, where you get a sense of Robbie Robertson with Martin Scorsese talking about the journey. Um, so just out of interest, I mean, how long did it, if, this is a question for everybody in the room. I mean, how long did it take to put all this stuff together? A long time. It was a good project during the pandemic when we had nothing else to do and no place to go and we could just focus. <laughs> I, I love Jeff dearly, but the, the terabytes and terabytes of footage that I received <laughs> were sort of, it was, it was basic and it was very good actually in a way. It was good that it was not, it was organized to Jeff. So he, I, I could ask Jeff like, do you have a shot of John Barry like back in the day in a studio? And he'd be like, oh yeah, it's, <laughs> he'd direct me because all of these clips were like 30 minute clips of just Jeff and his camera. So it was not organized. There were just these long clips that I would go in and cut up and I would have to mine and organize on my end to find certain things. But whenever I needed it, if I said, Jeff, I need a certain shot, he'd be like, oh yeah, here's like three instances of that. And here's where you find them. And I'd always be like, how do you know this? <laughs> I don't, I was surprised too. I had a little ticker tape thing where I kind of remembered every little aspect of that two hours yeah. from 1992. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I really have lived my life through through the camera lens often. I think in, in the moment I get a little overwhelmed and I love being a fly on the wall later and looking at my life again through 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 that lens. But so, yeah, I guess I've watched the stuff enough that I that I know where everything is. Yeah. But Mark, to yeah. his credit, he went through and I think cataloged everything. It took so long. But some docs. It was, docs, a, lot, some yeah, docs it was a lot of organization. It was a yeah. lot of organization. And that was really key to I me. Mean, you, you can't make a film like this unless you're organized. And so that was that was a big part of it. So, you know, we, we spent a month in L.A. doing interviews and then we went as far as Texas and uh, Minnesota. Nashville, Minnesota, up to get Alan's Bar Hark of Low um, for that interview. That was over. That was over Christmas, and that was sort of interesting. But and then and then it took a couple of years really to put together and and to really distill the story. I think I have 600 pages of interview transcripts that I boiled down and basically cut apart into an outline as served as my card catalog, just so I could sort of understand where things were, because there was that much information and that much data. And, and, I, and, I, and I, I like to have my finger on all of it and know where everything is so I can sort of then start to assemble the film. But I mean, it was a gift. I mean, having all this footage was an absolute gift. And I don't have no idea what I would have done. And Jeff hinted at it in the beginning, but I had no idea what a treasure trove mm. of, of footage there was going to be really okay. amazing um so jeff i've got to ask you a couple of things about the film i mean obviously i've got to talk about that file of your open tunings you um you show this file of open tuners i mean how many tunings did you have i mean i have probably 25 or 30 tunings but generally i use i mean the, the sort of hero tunings are probably six or seven and that it's it creates problems in so many ways, but you 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 come up with this wonderful these chords and these relationships between notes that you don't get on a standard tuning. Uh, but they're, they're they're quirky guitars; they have their problems, and and uh, I'm still a little bit on the fence. I'm sometimes I I I wish I just learned six string guitar, but but uh, but the <laughs> It's like no uh the uh it's 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 definitely part of the sound i mean but th then i have records like the uh lone gunman which are almost purely keyboard you know so i'll, I'll drop the guitars altogether so it, i'm not totally dependent on them. all right and the other thing as well is you bring out some of the fan mail i mean actually how much fan mail has idaho actually got <laughs> well, it was short lived. I think if it's just from 93 to whenever people started emailing and, uh, you know, I, I've, I've got a few boxes of it. I mean, um, 
and it's 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 fascinating to go through it so tactile and so heartfelt and yeah i i, I want to make a wall and I, when i finish redoing my house that's just all fan made just solid mm -hmm. um yeah stuff. i mean it, it, but, it, yeah, it was... never get that anymore i mean yeah. and um Jan, Mark, Jan, I mean, I've got to talk to you about, I mean, what were your cinematic influences when you were, what was your visual reference when you were putting this together? California. Uh, uh, what, Tarantino's film, uh, The Hub, Once, upon, Once upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, any of the old Westerns, um, you know, that, that, that sort of visual tapestry was, was sort of in my mind. And then I would... We listened to Idaho all the way from New York to California in the car. And, and we, 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 we had two questions in our head, like, what are we doing? <laughs> because we didn't really have an idea at that moment. And, but we knew it was going to be amazing. And then these songs would just evoke things. And the closer we got to California on the road, once you hit like Utah, you're in it. And then, and then all the way to California, it's these vision, these golden visions just sort of, you know, start to fill your mind as you're listening to the music. And, and that's just what happens. I mean, it's, it's the perfect music for a documentary filmmaker to use as the, 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 the aural glue to hold everything together because it's just so rich and vivid. And so I, and I shot a lot of different things, but I really wanted to use as little of my footage as possible, really. And you know, the footage that Jeff had was just, it was just so valuable. It, you just wanted to use as much of it as you could. But for the shots that I did shoot, I really tried to keep it very classic, very sort of old school Hollywood and, and try to put myself in, in the best mindset that I could into that time period. Yeah. I think also Idaho is just great for a road trip. Like to putting, put Idaho on, you know, in your car and just drive, especially as we were coming into California, we stopped off at Joshua Tree and we did some filming there. And it was just like the perfect soundtrack to a road trip through California. It was fantastic. Okay. Um, I mean, we, we understand you're going to be coming to the Rain Dance Film Festival to chair a panel on documentary filmmaking. That's where the film will be premiering. Um, just as a general, I mean, what what are, what is the panel going to be about, and what sort of, and just out of interest, I mean, what what sort of things will will people expect you and the others in the panel be be uh, covering? I think they want to cover, and and we're completely game to cover the the idea of like you know what goes into making a film like this. What are some of the challenges, the do's and don'ts? I think of of documentary filmmaking when it comes to making a music doc and you know, what people should be prepared for. I think how we approach the film as fans and as documentarians and, you know, what are some of those sort of considerations and, you know, talking in general about how we sort of structure the film and, you know, how the film is really the hero and, and we're just like humble servants really in a way. And, and for us, like making Idaho and Jeff the heroes of, of this experience is is exactly what we wanted to do and to be and if you st we always said to each other like if you start to feel my editing or my directing we're doing something wrong you know we wanted to be like the the music and the footage and the interviews we wanted them to, to really just shine and so we just tried to get out of the way you know mostly okay so, so I've got two, yeah i've got two final questions now i mean jeff um we must talk about the family connection because we do see interviews with your family and and associates and relatives i mean obviously the obvious question would be is if john was here today um what would he think of the documentary and of course what do your own family think of the documentary uh i i'm sure john would be so thrilled that it that it was made um he yeah I, I i can't imagine that that he would have any any sort of negative uh light to shine on it at all i mean he would be thrilled um he uh he, he yeah and and i'm uh you know he's 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 still always there while i write i i i john you know influenced me so much and i can kind of feel him there when i when when i'm writing and when I'm putting a, a, a feedback track of guitar down, it's like, I know he's, 
he's tickled by that but he yeah and 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 my my parents they both seen it my father and john didn't get along too well my father's an amazing human but he's a little uh i he think he i he thought john was kind of a kind of a uh, mess up and you know john on you know at first glance was was kind of a wreck in a way but people that really knew him as you can tell in the doc really loved him mm-hmm. he had a profound influence on a lot of people and not you know in many different ways he was a real real big-hearted kind of selfless guy who really loved his friends and and um so my father was a little upset that it was so concentrating on john but you know go yeah it was obvious that he would and my mother loved it completely loved it um but it's funny she's 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 getting older and you know she's just still got her wits about her but she asked me the other day if she could see it and I was like oh my gosh oh well you get to enjoy it again I guess <laughs> um but uh yeah they they're yeah they were okay. they're, they're, they're thrilled yeah, I think the, you, you answered it perfectly. And the final question to all of you is, what are you most proud of about this film? Uh, I think we're most proud of this film. I, I, I think for me, it's it's the celebration of, of Idaho. And, and it's, it's also the shining a light on a band that was really important to us and having the ability to do that with the footprint that we have, which is just the two of us making this film. I mean, we made this entire film. And so we're really proud that we were able to do that with, with, the, with the exception of sound mixing. Um, but, but we really put the whole film together and, and that's what we're really proud of and that we're able to make films like this that maybe are not gonna get picked up by HBO films and you know, shot, it's not gonna be a Netflix original you know, in films like this, much much like a lot of bands these days, get get sort of lost in this commercial, you know, rabidness to to make a buck. And you know, if if the money's not there, then people are not going to make these films. And and we really pride ourselves on being able to make the films that that deserve recognition and these topics that deserve to come out into the light. And I guess that's what we we always love with with all of the films that we make. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just yeah. excited that we're able to put something out there that celebrates the music as much as we love it and that other fans will gravitate towards that and I think appreciate it. And just that the, you know, what Mark was saying earlier about if you feel that his editing too much of heavy handed, it's just I think that I'm really proud of how it turned out because it feels like the film supports the music. And ultimately the music is the hero and Jeff is the hero. And I think that that kind of uh, rings true through the film. So I, we're excited for the fans to see it right. and hopefully okay. they enjoy it as much as we did making it. Okay. And the last word from you, Jeff? Well, I mean, I'm just so, it's almost like I got to be at, at my funeral in a weird way because my friends <laughs> who most of my close friends who were in it, I'm so shocked at how articulate and wonderful they were in there. I mean, all of them. I mean, I, I mean, it, it, I was shocked. So it, it really was kind of neat to, 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 to hear how the sort of music has, has moved them, but, but just, I was so, so uh, pleased with, with, with what Mark was able to pull from these people. Mark is so good at, 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 at interviewing people. He's, he, it, it's, it's definitely a gift that he has. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm so proud of, of Mark and Jan too, just for taking this, this big mess of Idaho and, and, and weaving something. Okay. Well, well, listen, um, Jan, Jeff and Mark, I got to say, it's been an absolute pleasure hearing about your insights today. I think that you've, you've got something to be proud of. And I think, I think I've got a sneaking suspicion that there'll be people tapping into the work of Idaho and your ongoing legacy. And I hope that we'll see Idaho in the UK at some point, you know, doing, you know, doing some gigs again, because I think it'd be a very interesting thing. Um, so thanks again for your time. Just some general closing remarks I mentioned earlier, Traces of Glory will play at the Rain Dance Film Festival and you can buy tickets at raindance.org. And for more information on Idaho, you can please go, you can also go to idahomusic.com. Um, this interview, 
it will be played as a replay on my official YouTube channel, John Egan's Film Review. And for more articles, interviews, and reviews, you can go to www.filmatvnow.com. And also check out my new film resource website, which we launched in April, What Movie at www.whatmovie.co.uk. So on that note, thanks very much, guys, and all the best. And um, here's to the future. Thanks so Thank much. You. It's a pleasure.